Welcome if you're new and if you're a seasoned quilt roadie, thank you for coming back. Today is going to be packed with lots of information. I have the window open so we might hear some traffic sound. I can hear a truck coming now, I think. Well, actually it's going up on the main road. <laughs> yeah, I live at the top of a little mountain and it's uh, interesting. Today is cloudy and blue sky. I've heard some jet traffic from the National Guard. But today I'm going to catch you up on the quilt show, haul, happy mail, do a little stitching. So while I'm jibber jabbering here at the beginning, go get yourself something to drink and to stitch on. I am, I'm kind of gotten hooked on this polar seltzer water, natural, 100% natural seltzer, orange vanilla. Ooh, very refreshing. And I'm sucking on a lozenger just because when I talk too much, my voice gets kind of rattled. So let's st start with the Happy Mail. I was blown away because when I got to, the, I hadn't been down to the stitching post in about a month and there was a little pile of mail there and I just have to show it to you. It's so, oh I just noticed something else on my Happy Mail. <laughs> so let's hope that I get this right. I showed this in my Zoom class because it was absolutely adorable and that day I was doing uh, a little hexi demo, uh, how I do hexies at the beginning of the Zoom. And this is just amazing to me. Just amazing. I, I'm going to be, I'm going to butcher the name only because I can't quite make out the writing. Um, it looks like Sabine to me. I hope I said that right, but she just said a small token of her appreciation for the videos. And let me just tell you, the videos, I know many of you have written to me and said the videos were a little bit of a stitchy line during the pandemic, but you have to know that they were also a stitchy line for me. And I read, even though this last week I have not been able to respond to every comment, I truly read every comment. And I too am grateful for this community that it has helped me explore other ways of doing things, um, widening my horizons as far as thought processes, um, the sharing that goes on in the comments is heartfelt and you can tell that people are handing a bit of themselves to all of us and their losses, their joys, and it truly has been a lifeline for me also. But let me just show you this. This is a little hexy pin cushion. If you can see how big that is in relation to my hand, and it has the letter A in the center, and it's little B fabric around the edge, and these hexes look like about, they don't look like, they look like half inch or three quarter inch hexes, and it has little pins and, and little beads, it's just absolutely adorable and <laughs> this is what I love is that when I see something whether it's at the quilt show or online it spurs me it uh, it opens my dreams is what it does and and I just go running off in a different direction so I absolutely love that 
it's it's so cute and then I got another little package look at this it's got scissors buttons needles I'm gonna I'm gonna use that on a project bag from Pat from Vermont. Look at these little honey pots and bees. Isn't that cute? Little tiny hexes in their future. Or maybe this is a big enough piece to try try my hand at bag making. Did someone say bad making? <laughs> Bag making? <laughs> yeah, that's scary, isn't it? I got this really fun box filled with things. Oh. So this card from um, Cricut. I love it because, look, first of all, look at the card. That is adorable. <laughs> she also travels in a Travado Winnebago van, which is what we travel in. And she was raised in Oregon and now she lives in Washington and she's stitching on the road and her mom who used to live in Prineville they would go over to sisters to the stitch and post and I have to tell you I have to tell you, Cricket, I used, uh, oh, I don't have it up here. Um, she said her um, son and uh, daughter-in-law both work for Pixar Animation, and she sent me a Pixar Animation cup. I mean, it's a quality, quality coffee cup. And from the moment I unwrapped it, I've been drinking coffee out of it in the van. Yes, it stayed in the van through our whole week, and I enjoyed it. It's such a sturdy little cup, and it had Pixar. But there they are in their van. Isn't that... That's, that's us. That's us. That is us. Yeah, well, this, uh, because the card is dimensional, it has this card that you put on top of it before you, um, they named their, uh, van Woody, after Woody and Jess, <laughs> Woody and Jesse, and so maybe, she said maybe Woody and Penny would meet up, yes, I love it, I love it. Yeah, Woody and Jesse are over there. They've been complaining because there's a new kid in the neighborhood, which I'll have to show on Instagram sometime. There's been some territory fighting going on in here. And then look at this. This little candle, beehive candle, and this little dish like I, I look at this as for my tea bag. I, I haven't even been able to unwrap it because this is so cute. This little thimble with gauze wrapped. Isn't that adorable? There are a few remnants of magic left in the world. Because of you, I believe it's true. Hmm. Yes. It's so 
it's, it, what can I say? I could, I could get all emotional and teary, but look at this. <laughs> I have my own bouncing bee. Oh, that's probably making you dizzy, huh? He's so happy. He's so happy. And I've already been using my pin cushion. I had the perfect pins for that. It has bees and beehives on it, and it just sits right next to my sewing table. And out of the same fabric. She had this fabric in her stash, mind you. This is like we were kindred spirits. But look at this project bag. And this one has a handle. And then look at the back of it. I think B projects have to go in this project bag. Let me tell you, it was quite a party in Sisters. Um, it is am amazing uh, what the week was like. I'm going to move this over here. Back. <laughs> so the Zoom clash classes in Sisters if I were to give my opinion about my Zoom classes, which are different than the other um, designers that were there, I mean, let me just say, let me back up. The Zoom classes with the other designers were held in their individual cities, and then they Zoomed through the stitching post. So... People are signing up. Uh, we have we are Zoom experts, aren't we? Uh, after this last year, we may not have all liked it 100%, but we took it and we ran with it because uh, it was better than being totally by yourself. <coughs> so those Zoom classes are very successful. Sue Spargo's been doing them. I mean, just all these designers have been doing them. Sit and stitch, though, I couldn't wrap my mind around how sit and stitch was going to work for Zoom. Because normally sit and stitch is everybody brings their project to the school and their sewing machine, and we take over the library and computer room, and they tend to... Um, isolate themselves in their little pods in this giant room. So you're mostly sitting with people you know or you came with. And a lot of people are working on projects that they took a class earlier in the week or a UFO from home. But they don't really socialize with each other too much. They're there for eight hours of supportive sewing. And so my uh, contribution to that class is to give opinions. I'm really good at that. <laughs> um, support. If someone's stuck on something, I might have the answer, or I might know who has the answer. And so it's, uh, I'm doing a lot of moving around the room, but the room is not moving around. They are staying in their spots. So I wasn't sure how Sit and Stitch would work on Zoom. So to make myself feel a little better, I picked a genre of my stitching. And each day I would just talk for about 10 or 15 minutes about that how I do it, why I do it, what I'm working on, and share it with the group. And then it would be just open to whatever. I loved it. I loved it. I was so shocked. <coughs> I was so shocked because of how nervous I was. 
and um, but what happened on Zoom was what these individual pods would have been in real life, a real life classroom setting, could talk to each other on Zoom. So they were sharing who they were, and everyone was listening, where they were at, what they were doing. Some people were um, had impending hurricane coming. <coughs> and um, so I was really, really amazed at what an awesome experience it was. Different people had different challenges going on in their life and they were able to share that and get support. They talked about their stitching, what they were working on, the weather outside. I, I tell you, it was a much more intimate class than the real person Zoom class ever was. So it makes me think that one, I'd have no problems doing another one. And two, I would um, like my Zoom class, uh, I mean, not my Zoom, but my sit and stitch when it goes back to in person to actually have people share a little bit about themselves uh, so that you um, know who your fellow stitchers are in the room. So that was my opinion. I, I would definitely, um, sign, if there's ever another sit and stitch Zoom, don't think you're getting um, uh, no, no bang for your buck because you might have met the perfect person on Zoom that knows exactly what you're going through in life. It was amazing. The show was awesome. It was not as big as it normally would have been, but everybody was so happy to be out there. And you had the same, you, you almost had a more joyful feel because people were talking and smiling at each other where in a normal quilt show, there's like, 1,400 quilts, you got to see them all. The people are focused on seeing the quilts and can you get out of the way? I need to take a picture. Where in this situation, people were smiling at each other because it was the first time maybe they hadn't worn a mask in forever. And they, they commented and I saw conversations going on. It was absolutely lovely. And I would definitely, I, I know I, I, I'm beating a dead horse here, but I would definitely put that show on your bucket list because it still had the most amazing heart. And I ran into a few people. A few people I should have run into, they were there and I never saw them. Now how does that happen? But we were camped at Creekside, which was... Um, It's right at the edge of town. It's inside the town limits. And um, it's owned by the city. And half the sites are like boondocking and half the sites are with hookups. And boy, you definitely, we were so grateful for the site with hookups because um, it was in the 90s all week and we could run our air conditioner. Yeah. Well, before I keep chatting, I'm going to show you my haul because, yeah, I had to bring something home. I did, but get a load of this. I had bought some yardage of Kelly Ray Roberts' new uh, fabric line that came out last year, and I gave it um, to Fern to make me a bag with, and... I totally forgot that she was doing that. It was it was like when she handed it to me, I totally forgot. It's so cute. I really do need to get over my zipper feel fear. But look at this. Is that the cutest cutest bag? And then the inside 
has her other fabric that has all the sayings on it. Oh, I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's almost like I don't want to get it dirty or put anything in it. <clears throat> they had a um, new Halloween fabric line in there, and you would have seen that on the Stitching Post video with the old made cards, you know. So there was this whole line of Halloween fabrics, and I'm a sucker, just an absolute sucker for Halloween fabrics. So I bought the charm pack because I think I need to make a Halloween table runner and it's filled with wonderful fabrics and then I had to get the jelly roll because you know I I just feel like you can never have too many Halloween quilts I just love the way that looks that swirl <laughs> isn't that cool well, when I saw this fabric, it screamed, it screamed pillowcase to me. It just screamed pillowcase. And I make pillowcases for my grandsons. I make, uh, although last year was a no pillowcase year, but <clears throat> I make pillowcases for my grandson. I like to make pillowcases for my daughter-in-law's sister's kids. And so this fabric here was a crack up. I mean a total crack up. It's a Christmas fabric with dinosaurs. Is that hysterical? Let me get it the right side. Any fabric that makes me laugh out loud has to come home with me. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw Hexies, or I saw something in these two. But look at these mushrooms. So I think I got a half a yard each of those. And then I had been telling you that I'd been looking for that smaller wool mat to iron um, to use for my hexes and um, different projects in the van that I wanted a small uh, ironing surface it, with the wool. And I have the bigger one that's on my... Um, regular ironing board but this one I bought specifically because it would fit inside my Yazzie bag and then with my little iron I could have a nice ironing surface. One of the booths that was out at the show is about women empowering women in Uganda and it's called Sisters of the Heart. And Janet goes two or three times a year, usually, to Uganda, to this village up in the mountains, and has taught, now they have actually a, a, a school there, but she has taught um, sewing skills. And she brings the products, a lot of the products, back, and I'll put the link, um, the link for her uh, in the description box, but it's Sisters of the Heart. And so when I went to their booth, there were a couple of, the, they had all the African fabrics for sale, but I bought a couple of things that Janet had made, and one was this pin cushion. And one was a project bag. Project bag made out of African dyed fabrics. I couldn't pass it up. One more.
more piece of haul, and this one is extraordinary. Um, I signed up to take a class from the tent makers of Cairo. Uh, you might have seen uh, a little snippet of an interview I did at Road to California video. And they are uh, representing their community in hand applique. And that's needle turn applique. And so there were several, they were supposed to teach last year, that all got canceled, I didn't get to take the class, and then this year they were doing a Zoom class, I believe, but I was uh, already working that day. And so when I was walking around the show, <clears throat> there was a whole area of all of the quilts they brought, and many of them were for sale. And so I was looking at one and I said, oh, these are the tent makers of Cairo. And gee, thought I should have it. And so you might have seen in the video where, <coughs> the video of the quilt show where I had uh, Jean, Jean Wells was standing closer to it to grab the tag off for me. Because uh, you had to, if you, any quilt that was for sale in the show, if you rip the tag off, then no one else could buy it. And then you go up and you pay at the desk. And that goes for all of the quilts. And I loved getting this in the mail. I had them ship it to me. And I loved that there was a little note on it, Packed for Anna by Marion and Chris. Both of them were friends. And they packed it for me, put a little note. But here it is. Is that not gorgeous? All the way from Cairo. Quilting is a worldwide craft, art, whatever you want to call it, that, um, that has supported and saved many of us, hasn't it? Well, I'm going to start stitching while I chatter. And I just wanted to show you, I got my, um, I got my quilt, my hugs quilt that had the, had the uh, sign language fabric on the back. So you can see that quilting. And as I did with the other quilt that I showed you, I am going to face this one because I did not want to add another element. So you can see how the edge is going to be. It'll be just turned under like that. But what I did do is I made sure that the sign language hands were going the same direction. I'm going to be stitching. Let me get some glasses. Well, how have you guys been doing? How's everyone been doing? I have been having a fabulous week with my older grandson. In the afternoons, he has been going to a mad contraption camp uh, up at a park that's like barely a mile away from us. It's a beautiful park. I had signed him up for um, an afternoon camp because I was afraid he was just going to be bored silly just hanging out with his grandparents the whole time. So made sure he had something to do. And, um, we were watching this movie last night. It was quite, uh, this animated movie. I don't even know the name of it, but he had picked it out. And it was, um, about a little, um, Asian girl who was wanting to 
find her mother on the moon or something like that. You know, some of those uh, children's movies are packed with innuendos and learning learning things. You know, they're just, I don't know, they're not like <laughs> Bugs Bunny and, <laughs> and Yosemite Sam of my day. <laughs> These actually have a message to them. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to bring this quilt up. Better to bring it up closer to you than to to fight the weight of it with your arms and shoulders, huh? Oh, someone was asking me about this particular um, quilt, too. And this is, I haven't quilted yet, I haven't decided how to finish it, but this is a um, Stacy West buttermilk basin um, that she designed specifically for the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, I believe in... Two thousand nineteen or two thousand eighteen, so it has the three sisters. It's just beautiful, and I don't know. I think you might be able to contact Buttermilk Basin if you're interested in in creating that because Stacy is nonstop when it comes to designs. She is nonstop. She just never slows down. She doesn't sleep. I uh, noticed a couple of things. Have you noticed things are a little bit different uh, because of COVID? I mean, I, I know that seems silly to ask, but I mean, what I'm thinking is that there's some things that are changed that you wouldn't have expected it, and yet it has, and you wonder what happened. Because the other day when I was at the grocery store, there were no carts strewn about the parking lot. Every cart was taken back to the cart garage. You know, that they have different cart stations around a parking lot. I, I don't know. I remember that people just left the carts willy-nilly. You know, that sometimes you'd have to get out of, um, you'd have to get out of uh, your car you don't ever see a semi going down the street I think he might have gotten lost they don't even allow semis on the street because it's too narrow It is kind of like a narrow street and windy, windy, windy all over the top of this place. Um, so, yeah, before uh, COVID, people left their shopping carts wherever they felt like it. And sometimes you'd have to get out of your car to move the cart out of the way so you could park. But what I have noticed at least here is that there are no carts. Everyone's taking their cart back to the cart garage so that the bag person, with whatever they call them now, is not having to go all over the parking lot looking for the shopping carts. They're always in the in the little cart garage. And I wonder I wonder what made people su suddenly realize, hey, you're a grown-up now. You can take your shopping cart back and put it away. <laughs> it took a pandemic for that to happen. <laughs> yeah, there's just different things that make me wonder, what the heck? You know, we couldn't have done that before? Well, 
We did cancel our camping trip to La Conner. We just couldn't. We were burning candles at both ends. We, um, I, when I looked at the calendar, I think what happened was that I got so excited about everything starting to open up that um, that I made uh, I had made all these camping reservations when we were locked down, just thinking I wanted to have it happen. But when it came down to it, we were exhausted when we came back from Sisters. And then to think a week and a half later we were going to go camping up in Washington, and a week and a half later after that we were going to go camping again, it was just too much. So we um, decided just to cancel the, the middle one so that we could, uh, so I could get some UFOs done. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. You go to a quilt show and you're going to get inspired. You're going to get inspired. And not only that, I, um, while I was down there, I visited um, different people, different friends. I saw um, my son's fairy godmother and my grandchildren's great fairy godmother. Um, went and visited her, and it was the first time, you know, she lives in a adult living community. She has her own home in there, but they were so strict that um, I was not allowed to get out of my car. So we would visit while I sat in the car in the driveway. And um, so this was the first time in over a year that we met... Um, without masks and I sat inside her home it, yeah it's just amazing it is amazing the change so it was fun seeing her getting her all caught up and then um, my quilt group down in uh, uh, sisters I mean uh, of course, I ended up, because after the uh, class, the, I, you know, they started like at 10 in the morning, but that's when my, my Zoom class started, so I could only go after noon when it was over, and so there were only two people left there for the gathering, but it was so fun just, just sitting outside, you know, at Nola's house, and and getting to talk and catch up, and they could catch me up on everybody else. And it's interesting because everybody, it just seemed like so many people we knew have been moving or on the move or changing. Changing what the, how they want their home or life to function. And so um, that was kind of fun. That was kind of fun to visit with them. And then on Saturday, I went, after the show, I went, um, let's see. I stopped and saw a friend that's in a book group that I belong to and talked with her and her husband. She's not a quilter, though. She did try. She tried. We tried to get her to do it, and she tried, but, you know, she didn't get it. Yeah. And on top of that, she didn't enjoy it. Yeah. But I still like her. <laughs> Even though she's not a quilter. So then I went over to my Fabric Stalkers group. We were meeting at uh, one person's house outside, and and then we were. This is the group that I'm going on retreat with in September, and 
Um, so it was uh, fun catching up with them because uh, if there's one thing I know, it's that when you're with uh, friends who quilt and they show you what they've been doing and let me tell you there are a couple in that group that are overachievers yes um, it, it stimulates you to want to do more like I could not wait to leave sisters get home and start quilting and um, so the first thing I needed to do was to get this binding done then I'm going to start cutting out um, some quilts for retreats so that they're all ready, uh, ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for retreat. I'm ready for quilt shows. I'm ready for quilt classes. I love quilt classes. I love those quilty wilt. Um, classes. I've got to check out what um, what's happening at Pioneer Quilts up here too. The real trick, you know, I'm bouncing all over. The real trick to um, the facing as opposed to the binding is that once you attach the facing to the front of the quilt, you have to iron it out and then you have to do an eighth inch seam line because it's that seam line that makes it roll right over and stay flat. If you Google quilt roadies facing a quilt, um, I show a tutorial of it. See, I'll show you here. See how smooth that edge is? It's just rolled over and I didn't add another color element by doing a binding. I really love that technique for certain, um, for certain quilts. It's not for every quilt, but for certain quilts. Boy, the fires have been, the, this is an early fire season and it's been horrific down in Oregon. Um, there's one burning in Oregon that's the largest forest fire in history. It's already over 200,000 acres. And then the one that's outside of Sisters, they still don't, it's still not, uh, they don't have a big containment line on it, so they're watching it. It's just so dry that you wonder why, you know, how long does it take for the state of Oregon to realize that maybe we shouldn't allow fireworks and yeah, my kids grew up with fireworks. I love them. They're entertaining. They're a lot of fun. We used to spend the morning, the day after July 4th, sweeping, taking our garbage can out there and sweeping up all the remnants from the fireworks in the cul-de-sac. But, you know, times have changed and it is so dry. And there's flash flood warn uh, or flash floods in Arizona. Just a uh, crazy weather year. Crazy weather year. Well, I could keep jabbering. Oh, well, let me, before I sign up, let me tell you. 
I have been reading this book and it's it's interesting it's a fiction book you know and I seem to have um, uh, kind of fallen into the fiction book and enjoying it during this um, COVID. Maybe the reality, maybe that's it. Because um, I'm generally like a documentary or, uh, not to be snooty about it, but, you know, I always just want to know. I want to know the facts kind of thing. And, and so I've always liked the documentary or the... Um, how-to books, but in COVID, I guess I was done with reality, <laughs> and I, I fell back into fiction, which was my first love, you know, and so I started picking up these different recommendations, and this was recommended by a friend, and it's, uh, I think it's called The Last Time I Saw You. Now, some parts of it are, uh, let's see, it's Elizabeth Berg. Yeah, the last time I saw you. Um, and some parts of it are kind of a little bit on the goofy side, but it really made me think. It was about a 40-class reunion. <coughs> so... People um, who haven't seen each other for, uh, are having a class reunion, and they're wanting, you know, they're at the points in their lives of like my age, I guess, and, well, we're probably closer to 50, but um, this is basically a 40 class reunion, and the characters are talking about, you know, the characters who have remained friends since high school are talking about um, different classmates and, and that kind of thing. And, and they're describing these different classmates in terms of what they were like when they were in high school. And I was just... I kind of sat back and I was trying to remember who I went to high school with. And I went to a fairly small school, but I don't think if I ran into some of my classmates, I would even recognize them or remember their names. I functioned in a, a you know, high school is all about your groups. And the group that I functioned into kind of flew below the radar, I guess. And um, I wouldn't say we were nerds because we weren't that, you know, we weren't exceptionally smart. We were intelligent, but um, I guess we weren't the, the, the jock or cheerleader group, you know. And um, so I was asking G if he remembered his high school classmates and he 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 remembered the the events that stood out for him but it's interesting how you have certain judgments about who people were in high school like they haven't had uh, they haven't changed since high school well of course they've changed in some way somehow life didn't go exactly like you at at 17 might have predicted it would go. <coughs> so it was funny to think about that, you know, because it brought to mind, and I think I've told you this before, but it brought to mind that my sister went, I've only been to one class reunion, and I think it was the 30-year class. And, um, but my sister went to a different high school and she went to several of hers and there was a woman who was just kind of aloof towards her and at the 40 year reunion that woman finally talked to her and said that she had been upset with her for 40 years for stealing her boyfriend 
and my sister had no clue what this woman was talking about. And she said, I don't know who that guy is, and I never stole your boyfriend, but whatever. But can you imagine? She's been carrying that around. And so my sister called me up, and she goes, telling me this story. And she goes, do you know this guy? And I said, yeah, I dated him. And, and so even though I was at a separate high school, this woman was carrying that angst for all that time. I'm telling you, life is too short to be carrying garbage like that around. You know, he obviously wasn't worth it, and I don't remember ever stealing him from somebody, but I remember that he was, uh, he had a girlfriend that he didn't want to be boyfriends with anymore, so, uh, you know, <laughs> but this book is, is entertaining in that way, is that you, the things you think about, uh, so I, I would suggest reading it. I would, I would pass on this, uh, the recommendation and just know that there are parts of it that are going to make you roll your eyes. But, um, but I've been plugging through it and uh, thinking about different people who maybe fit the characters in that book. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying the... I've been enjoying the... Um, Fiction. Fiction books. They are highly entertaining and distracting. Okay, I think I've rambled enough. I hope you are all doing well, that um, you're staying safe. Um, my daughter-in-law says there's been an uptick of people in the ER. Um, and thank goodness, most of who they have seen have uh, been vaccinated, so they're they're presenting with less serious symptoms. But the ones that have not been vaccinated yet, oh, she says, they are just miserable, just miserable. So take care of yourself. We need all the quilters in the world we can get. You take care. And thanks for stitching with me today.